And I'm Rick Van Hoos. It's a day President Reagan made a national holiday more than 30 years ago to commemorate slain civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And across the nation, five decades after his death, thousands gathered today in tribute. But for some, this day and the name are personal. WLKY's Lauren Adams sat down with one of King's close friends, a Louisville pastor, to reflect on King's legacy. She joins us now with a story you'll only see on WLKY. Lauren? Good evening to you, Vicki. Reverend Charles Elliott, now 80 years old, is known to many as the face of King Solomon Missionary Baptist Church, where he's pastored for more than 50 years. But you'll also find him in the history books, oftentimes right alongside the man he simply called ML. We weren't allowed. We weren't allowed to sit on the front seat. And so, decades ago in Wheeler, Alabama, a young man set out to change the way he was forced to ride the bus. But there was only frustration and disappointment as Charles Elliott felt the cold blast of water hoses and the bite of police dogs over and over again. I had to keep fighting, keep fighting, and keep fighting until the change did come. Because we were living a miserable life. It was miserable. It was 1959. Charles Elliott was in Birmingham when it was decided to bring a virtual unknown to the Deep South. His name, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And Elliott now admits it's the doctor part that initially got their attention. Later on, it was his speeches. But there was something about him that just drawed me. I just couldn't get enough of him. It's me and this is King. The pair marched side by side for nearly a decade. Every time he would call me, I would go. And so when King called from Memphis in 1968, Elliot went. He returned home Wednesday night. King was assassinated Thursday. He just shook me. It just shook me. That was one of the hardest things that ever happened to me in my life. Still is. Because it was King who had spoken of and long promised equality. I have a dream. And in his death, Elliot feared that dream of lunch counters and schools not separated by skin color would die too. But instead, it has become a reality. I didn't believe it. King did, but I didn't because he had the vision. Not only was Reverend Elliot instrumental in the early marches in Birmingham, he was on hand in 1962, get this, when the first black student enrolled at the University of Mississippi. He also tells me he was among the first to bring Dr. King here to Louisville. I'm Lauren Adams, WLK.